After hours of negotiation with my partners, I finally got them to give up the best giveaway we've ever done on an episode. You ready for this? One of you lucky viewers gets your choice of one of the new January bundles that we're offering. So we have three bundles, one for a beginner, one for intermediate, and one for advanced. All three of them include nine months of exercise programs. So it's multiple MAPS programs put together perfectly, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below on the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. And then you pick one of those bundles and you'll get all those programs for free. Now, the rest of you, okay, those bundles are available right now in January, all 50% off the lowest price we've ever done for bundles like this to help people get started and to stay consistent throughout the year because a lot of people get started in January and don't stay consistent. So very effective bundles, all 50% off. You can find them all at MapsJanuary. Com. So go to mapsjanuary.com, check them out, get the one that's best for you. All right, here comes the show. Sleep in a cool bed and burn more body fat. All right, guys, let's talk about this. Well, that's Are you a telling great, me I've been doing it right the whole time? You have. That's so, a great commercial for chili. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. No, there's, okay, so are you guys familiar with brown fat and white fat? Uh, yeah, I've heard, I've heard some podcasts. I thought that's been debunked. Like the difference of that, like the whole, you know, no, no, brown Dr. fat Ron burns. Patrick talks about it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh. no. So brown fat is got, is used to warm up the body. It's more thermogenic and studies show that people and animals with more brown fat as a percentage of their overall body fat tend to be leaner. So it's like the, I guess for lack of a better term, the Fat burning fat. Mm. Now here's the cool thing, right? So you can convert the you know the white fat. To that's what I fat, thought right? was debunked. No, that's, that's true. You yeah, can actually. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's like plasticity with uh with your fat. So your some of your white fat can convert to brown fat, which then becomes more thermogenically active and healthier, and makes you uh, makes it easier to get leaner. So are you saying one of the ways to do that is by sleeping in a cooler yes. bed can actually convert some of the white fat to brown fat? Yes. So there's a few. What? Yeah, there's a few interesting things, right? So sleeping in a cool bed, first off, uh, it significantly reduces sleep apnea. So people with mild sleep sleep apnea, just cooling the bed down or cooling the room down, that'll help. So it's good for your health. There increases REM sleep, and also. Sleeping in a cool bed or a cool room creates more of this conversion of white fat to brown fat. So the theory would be that that would help you become leaner. More brown fat's better. No, that's interesting because I think that I would have thought that the benefits of that come from your body trying to regulate its temperature. Therefore, it's got to work harder to raise your your temperature, right? Well, so that's, if, I, if I sleep in it, yeah. because I sleep at like 55 degrees with my chili. So I imagine that my body through the night is trying to keep me warm. And so it's having to work more than it normally would in turn, i.e. burning more calories. Yes. So that's where I would think the benefit comes from. Well, that's the fat burning benefit. So you get all the sleep improvement benefits was my point, right? So a cool bed it significantly improves sleep quality across the board. And we know, uh, it's a matter of fact, that sleeping better... You are leaner, you're healthier, you build more muscle, better hormone profiles, or to put differently, mm -hmm. getting suboptimal sleep causes you to store more body fat. You don't burn, you don't build as much muscle. Hormone profile is not as good. So there's that. So, but if we remove that, just forget that for a second. What you're saying is is absolutely true. So uh, there's a study that they did called the where they they actually studied how brown fat is uh, converted or how we end up developing more brown fat from sleeping in a cooler bed. It's not just eating chocolate ice cream. No, it's not eating chocolate ice cream. So okay. they they did this with people and they found that the the that cold beds or cool beds stimulated this kind of brown fat uh, buildup or conversion, which is really interesting. So this is really cool. So they said- I wonder if there's a connection then to people that have like live in like colder states that they have more brown fat than other people that live in like areas like Florida or okay. California. That's a good question. Mm. Now, now the, to, a good point around that is I, it's not going to offset like eating yeah, of course, bad, yeah. and, right? We're talking about like small difference here, right? We're not talking about like crazy amount. Like a workout is going to burn a hell of a lot more yeah, calories. Yeah, like if you live in Miami, you're probably more self-conscious about looking good and you know, all <laughs> so that that's, stuff. That's a yeah. bitter yeah. motivation. Yeah, just like showing your body without your clothes on. <laughs> Yeah. So there, you know, but, but besides that you sleep uh, every night and you do it for the, your entire life. And it's, it's a significant portion of your life. I don't know what the number is, but it's a, ch a huge chunk of your life is spent sleeping. So if you could every single night for the next, however long 
sleep in a cool bed, um, could this be significant over long periods of time? I think so. Be- just mm. because of the amount of exposure and how often you go to sleep and how long you sleep. So it's a pretty big deal. Now, I personally noticed a couple effects from using the chili uh, pad or the you know their, their devices, the Uller. In fact, that's the one I use. So for people don't know, it's a it's a pad you put over your mattress and you put your sheets over it, and it uses water to heat or cool the bed. There's no EMFs, so there's no it's not the the part of the device where it's you plug it and everything is not on the bed that you're sleeping on. So low EMF, it's water cool, water warmed. What I noticed when I made the, made the bed cool is, yes, I slept better. I also noticed less inflammation. I woke up less stiff, more energy throughout the day. Now, as far as the fat loss effects, I you know because I control my diet and, and exercise so much, I didn't notice that. But these studies are really fascinating. That this yeah, is another, another benefit of doing this. And it's the most effective way of, of cooling your bed because some people can cool the room. But they, I don't know about you guys, but mm. I generate so much heat sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's like I'll end up doing this thing where I sheets off, then I get cold sheets on, then I'm hot, then sheets. But with the chili pad, it's it it if you set it, let's say at sixty degrees, it'll it keep regulates. it at sixty. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like it's just cold. If you start to go, you well, know, that's the too- biggest benefit I noticed because yes, you know, I, I do sleep hot, but also I'll, I'll wake up. I'm more prone to getting up and then having to go to the bathroom or, you know, rolling over and I'll kind of wake up and mm-hmm. look around, uh, when I'm, I'm hot when I'm sleeping versus like, uh, when it's cool and the, the temperature is that, that nice, cool, even distributed cool. Like I, I it's the deepest sleep I can get. Yeah. Well, what- if, from an evolutionary standpoint, it makes perfect sense, right? If we, we evolved without uh, temperature controlled rooms, it probably got cold at night, um, so it makes sense that this is how. I mean, everybody knows you sleep better when when it's cold versus when it's hot. Yeah. Um, so it makes perfect sense. And then the way that the that your body wakes up, it, there's there's a couple things we do that are super unnatural. One is when we wake up, it's a loud alarm clock right out the gates, and it's super loud. Yeah. Then we get up and we switch the lights on. Boom! Like We're staring at our phone. Yeah, that's not nature. Like you don't wake up with a super loud unless something scary happened. Yeah. So you know what you could do with these this these new devices is they could slowly warm you up to get your body to naturally wake up, and then I combine it with an alarm clock that slowly glows. I still and simulates- haven't got that. You guys all have that, huh? Yeah. It's so do you awesome. have it too, Doug? I have it, but I haven't re- really used it. Oh, it's so it's, awesome. It's, oh, you have it, but you don't use it. It's programmable. It's hard to read. The most. At least yeah. the one I have, it's hard yeah. to read. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not that hard to, to, to well, just read the thing. It's super if, easy to figure out. If Sal figured it out, I feel I like know. I was going to say. <laughs> go on. Doug still needs me to come over and program wow. his VCR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it it's like simulates the sun rising, and so you yeah, kind of yeah. wake up. No, real, you guys were talking natural. about it, I think it was a year or two ago, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. But I, I mean, I wake up pretty pretty naturally in the morning the only time i have to is if i set like my alarm for like really early do you not set an alarm just wake up yeah i just for like what time we get here right now like the, i'm up by that time because max is up by that time oh, yeah. earlier, i need so. all the help like all the aids all the things <laughs> to get me up and so like you guys know me and the the whole cup zero and like everything involved with me getting up is you know this this whole process so yeah i have like that sun rising effect i have the heating up effect i have you know the first thing that i do is just like uh, i have all my clothes already set ahead of time so i have to like look for things oh my because God. i just don't have it <laughs> like, i don't have it until yeah. i get in my car and start driving you know what i hate to say i hate to say this but i I would bet money right now that all of us, except for maybe Doug, have I'm apnea, some kind bit. of sleep apnea. Damn it! That's, oh, a, that's a, I, first of all, I've shared rooms with Probably, all you guys, but yeah, you guys snore like I can't even understand. But I'm a side guess. sleeper, so it's somewhat, you know, like I'm sure it's a little bit better than yeah. on my back. But yes, I, I yeah, you have me there. worried about that because you've said that to me, but. It, Katrina tells me I don't snore, but then I get situations like that. I do know you're more relaxed when I'm in there with you. So. <laughs> so, so <it> is. <laughs> I normally, I, I feel I, if I you do snore, it's normally bit. either like a allergy or I'm sick or like I'm exhausted. Yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. we did something like that. I think that was, you're talking about the trip where we went out and, and talked all day and yeah. things like that. That tends to get me to snore like that. But yeah. I, I'm afraid to get tested because this, yeah, this is a stupid reason to be afraid to get tested because sleep apnea increases risk of like heart yeah. disease, heart attacks, strokes, like terrible for you but i'm afraid to get tested because i don't want to wear the, the I, I know this is so dumb i sound like no, such a bro the freaking nose thing that you with the tube and i everything. do not want to turn in darth vader 
Um, also, when we had Dr. Ruscio on, like the reason why I knew about the didgeridoo is because of that fact. Like, I just don't want to put on this uh, mask. I would rather uh, become like you know a hippie on the streets, like doing a didgeridoo, <laughs> in order to not wear a mask so I can sleep better. Yeah, apparently the 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 skill of playing that strengthens the muscles in the yeah tongue and the throat and helps prevent sleep apnea yeah it helps sort of like set it uh so it doesn't uh your tongue doesn't are there other back. things besides the didgeridoo thing whatever that thing is like the uh being lean there's, yeah, yeah there's just yeah remember that study i read a long time ago that when people gain body fat their tongues get your fatter? neck too like is it your, just your body size? fat though or just like mass too muscle mass in the yeah, neck too. Muscle yeah muscle mass in the neck i was gonna say i i know when i was up to like 230 240 i was snoring and so I think that there's definitely a, a sweet spot for my weight where my body wants to be. In well, also, I'm the heavy breather now, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Doug's always on me. <laughs> Doug <about it>. the <laughs> <play>. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't even realize I'm doing it. Dude, that's <laughs> it sucks. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, look, this is very interesting because, if you know, those people who are into fitness and health focus heavily on exercise and nutrition, um, maybe hydration and sleep is, it tends to be a little bit on the back burner, mainly because you get away with suboptimal sleep, especially if you're fit and healthy, especially if you're young and you drink a lot of caffeine, which a lot of people in fitness do. And, but it's, it's the truth is sleep quality has such a profound, it's as profound mm. of an effect on your health. It's where all the magic happens, really. It, it is, as a diet and exercise. Yeah. And so if there's something you can do to increase the amount of thermogenic fat burning fat on your body even if it's a couple percent but you sleep every single night yeah. and you do for the next you know however many years you're alive just doing this thing i feel could have a well i think effect. i think that's just like a nice little kicker i mean i think focusing on your sleep is so impactful in your life in itself like even if it didn't have any fat burning effects i think yeah. the, the value in getting a good sleep routine and trying to figure out how to get the best sleep you possibly yep. can it pays you back yeah. tenfold in everything else you do. Yeah, my cousin. Yeah. So I, one of my cousins just had a baby, and he's he's now learning this the sleep uh, value. I think that's when you really <laughs> learn how important sleep is. Hundred percent. He dude. just had a baby, right? So congratulations to my my cousin Alex, beautiful baby girl, very healthy. And uh, he's you know I'm texting him back and forth. So I've had now my brother had a baby you know six months ago. My other cousin now he's got the baby. So we have all these babies in the family. But I texted him. I'm like, hey, how's it going, man? And he goes. He's all, I've only slept seven hours in the last 72 hours. He goes, is that like, is that like what do you think about that? I'm like, well, like, well welcome like, to- Welcome uh, yeah, no. to the dad club. He's like, I yeah. feel, he's like, I feel like I'm in a bubble or a cloud. He goes, I'm losing my mind. I'm like, it's only three days, dude. I said, you got to figure this out, bro. You have like a year of this terrible sleep ahead of you, you know? Yeah. So he's kind of freaking out a little bit. Hey, but. have you, did you listen to the recent All In podcast where they did like the predictions for this year? I thought that was, I thought we, I want to do something like that i feel like they did something pretty cool that was i didn't pretty... listen to it i listened to the last one which is pretty good i'm gonna i'm gonna get what uh, <laughs> industries did they cover or i mean they do everything they go yeah. they go politics stocks uh like they i mean they had probably had like eight or ten different categories that they they went Dude, across I'll, they did round table I'll, I'll make a this is not but really it'd be a... fun to do one like fitness more totally. related, yeah. related yeah. well yeah. i'll make one on fitness and i'm just i'm reading the the chicken bones right now the political chicken bones so i'm like you throw them on the ground you read the <laughs> you, chi you know you know when they when they read the bones to tell you like Future. Voodoo? Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so the politicians will often project what they're going to be doing with their policies or testing out the public. And uh, right now, the, all the policies surrounding COVID, you notice that it's politically, it's political murder at the moment to talk hard about more mandates, more lockdowns, more whatever. So they're kind of making this, they're, they're, they're taking different turns and what they're talking about right now. So I predict that gyms are probably going to see some of the biggest turnouts that they've seen in a long time, yeah. even pre-COVID. That's interesting because that would be like a full 180 since that was totally. you know, demonized early on. Totally. Well, Did you see the CNN article that yes. uh, just came out? I mean, what? It's, it's what the articles I've already seen about it uh, w with, uh, you know, basically um, 
they're, they're making it. Um, COVID's attacking fat cells. Basically, right. fat cells, yeah, like it is a, is a big part of that. So, losing weight has a massive benefit yeah, to so, it. So, uh, people in the health and fitness space have been saying this since day one. Yeah. Uh, and nobody want to listen. Kind of a no brainer, but it's like finally, yeah. like, you know, these publications are starting yes. to put out the information. Yeah. So, early data was showing like obesity was a huge risk factor for severe symptoms. Of course, nobody want to talk about that. Well, now we've got more studies showing that it's a big risk factor that COVID attacks fat. Now, <clears throat> politicians are saying things like, why are we closing gyms when losing weight's one of the best things you could do to protect yourself against COVID? And <laughs> CNN is yeah. now point, you know, printing these studies and talking about these studies uh, that we maybe we need to lose weight in order to get through this. So now that it's becoming this, it's becoming this narrative and it looks like it's gonna become part of this narrative that they're gonna push, to get people to work out more mm -hmm. because of the fear. I think people are going to flock to gyms like never before. I don't know. That's that's interesting. I wish I could see the numbers on how much it's rebounded Some, since since COVID already. Like, I don't know. Have you guys been to a, a, a public gym not. in a while? I have not. And like, so uh, based uh, off of that theory, then do you also see Peloton and Tonal re rebounding? Do you I see? Don't. Okay. So yeah, you don't see that because of gyms. I feel like people are done being yep. at home. Yeah. <laughs> they they want to be out and about. Oh, interesting. So yeah. That's just my sense. And again, I think it's a very optimistic outlook on, on, you know, if, if gyms are going to be popular again, but mm -hmm. I, I hope that's the case. Yeah. So, and, and I, uh, you know, when this first happened, I thought that the gyms would suffer some kind of permanent blows. And I still think that there's gonna be some changes that aren't going to go away. But that being said, uh, all the lockdown stocks, Peloton, uh, Zoom, yeah, like cr they're they're de they're crushed right now. They were crushed. They were doing great when everybody was stuck at home. Yeah, yeah. But now they're plummeting. Peloton's not doing so well. And really, they're just coming back down to the real world because they were like 10, 15 x. Good point. Yeah, where yeah. they shouldn't have been. Right. Like, Good well, point. The, none of the the numbers made sense really, except for everybody predicting that they were going to be the future. So I feel like they're still not bad companies technically, but yeah. they're just come back down to earth. Yeah. Because no, of, yeah. no, very good point. But now again, we're hearing them say, uh, like there was a one uh, congressman who said, why are we shutting? We should not be shutting gyms down right now when being overweight is a huge risk factor. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming out saying, hey, lose weight. It's one of the best ways you can protect yourself. There was a study that showed that COVID uh, uses fat cells. It's like, oh, ah, fat finally, cells. I don't know. It's just like <laughs> so. <laughs> I think that in wait for this. that combined with lockdown fatigue, people are over it. People are like, I need to get out and do something. And then you add that with the perfect storm of January, and I bet you this was one of the most indulgent holiday seasons we've ever had mm. because we went into this holiday season already with the whole lockdown fatigue. People mm -hmm. probably are like stressed. But I'm going to party, hang out. I don't even care. Right. And they're, now it's January like normal. And they're like, I want to get in shape. Plus all this fear. I bet you we're going to see huge numbers of people, you know, starting workouts. I wonder how many people took that uh, statement from the White House uh, that was like very fear-driven seriously. Oh you know? God, because that was just so inflammatory. I couldn't believe that. Uh, that was like the last push of fear I saw, uh, you know, coming from the government. Yeah, for the unvaccinated, expect a winter of death and destruction. <laughs> so, it was almost exactly like that. Yeah, so, it was like something out of Game of Thrones or something. You know, it like, was terrible. Winter is coming. Yeah. So I wonder if it also because. We know it attacks fat cell. This would be, by the way, this wouldn't work very well. I don't think it works this way. But I wonder if like people are going to get liposuction because they're afraid. Oh <laughs> my god! I mean, I so that that's to boom. me that's a better prediction because uh. the idea that I mean, people are always going to take the the yep. easier path because you're thinking that the people that are going to come in flocking into the gyms now are the people. I don't that think they'll stick. By the way, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they're going to stick. I yeah. think we're going to. I know you wouldn't be that crazy yeah. to say yeah. that. So, no. but I mean, I do see that people going like, wait a second, if if fat is going to increase my rate, I can suck of, suck yeah. it out of me yeah. for let me get a major surgery that'll help my immunity. Dude, I guarantee people are going to think about that. Did you guys know too, though, that they actually have like these procedures for dogs now that what? people are investing in? What yeah, like doing? tummy tucks and like no eye no. and yes, I'm serious. Now I know they do pla so my dog was a, was a has a case for that, like plastic surgery for his nasal. Uh, well, they already canal, do like his yeah, well, that's they're they're tail. Do, like, cropping of ears and like yeah. docking of tails and all that kind of stuff. But it's gotten to a point where it's like all cosmetic now. No way. I'm serious, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm gonna, well, there's like a few of these. There's the the lip lift, what? tummy tuck, For dogs? eye lift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you got Doug. Please give us some pictures here. This is these poor dogs, dude. It's like I, I can't believe that they have all these like uh, available. And, and, and again, 
I should believe that because you know they've also cloned like uh, dogs in order to try and and um, if, if your dog's deceased or has some kind of disease, like have they can again. now clone. Yeah, so it's like they have the same dog to replace uh, the other dog, and so it's nice. like people are very, you know, I get I get it on some level, but also it's ridiculous. Like there's rhinoplasty. Facelift, eye replacement, what testicular the? implants, tail. Well, all right, I knew about those, testicular implants yeah. where when they'll, they'll snip the balls and then some people want fake balls put in their dog. Which that to me is it like that's interesting. Like, why, like why would you want to look at those? It looks like Sharpays. Is that what that? Is? What is that? Well, that's a Sharpay, or they, or is that a Sharpay where I, they they lifted like, the face? Yeah, you know? so you could see the the dog could actually see if it's like one of those functional things where it helps well, so the dog. Then okay, that so makes that's, sense. So that because technically, you know, the cropping of Mozzie's tail is quote unquote cosmetic. But what made us do it was. His tail corkscrewed over his butt, and so a lot of times when he'd poop, he'd get it stuck in there, and then get bacteria, and then he'd get these like like these cysts, and like it was right. just constant oh, man. headache. And you know, and he was probably in pain. So the way we looked at it is like, okay, let's cut his cut this tail down, so it's no longer a problem. Yeah. They, and we had that wasn't like an insurance thing they pay for. It's like we had to pay out of pocket. It's considered cosmetic. Uh, we did the same thing with his cherry eye. So I mean, if they're like that. Like there, it's functional to help. But if you're talking about like lip well, implants, or, this article yeah, that's is talking weird. about you know the the kind of Hollywood like Paris Hilton types though that are just like trying to make their dogs super pretty and Instagram worthy. Yeah, that's crazy that's because their me. dog's an accessory. That's why. Yeah, they, they, exactly. The ones that the same people that like push them in baby carts and oh. and, and and like totally <laughs> you think it's a baby. Oh, keep it. Oh, it's that a dog. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Although a dog on uh, myostatin inhibitors would be kind of. Cool. Have you ever seen those pictures? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, the whippet. Yeah, the, 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 oh, yeah. Just you imagine taking a muscular dog into it. Where that? are we with that science? We talked about that a, a while back, and it, that was like something that we speculated is like one of the you know well, emerging sciences. Yeah, that they were going to use that. Like, have you read anything recently? No, I don't think it's. I don't. I mean, there's nothing. I don't think commercially available. But when that does become available, that's going to be very strange. I think mm. it'll make it's going to make anabolic steroids look like Flintstone vitamins. Mm. You know, you <laughs> can take. I mean, serious. Yeah. If you see the studies on them. It's insane what the amount of muscle that these things that myostatin can you know prevent from growing or make grow. It's like the super superhero uh, serum. There was yeah. a video I saw once of this little kid that everybody was speculating had a gene that where the myostatin was kind of but just naturally, and he was like I want to say three or four, and it, he looked like a little mini like bodybuilder. It was weird. He was walking around like, Urgh. and I was like, whoa, that looks weird. <laughs> yeah. You imagine having a kid like that? Yeah. yeah. Dad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but, you think that maybe like some kids could have like a genetic mutation that like, you know, has well, that kind of oh, quality. There he is. Is that the myostatin kid? Oh, the, oh no, that's God. not real. That can't yeah, be real. That's, that's not real. It doesn't look real. No, no, that one's not real, Doug. No way. No. That can't be a real arm, dude. That looks, looks like, like a mini uh, that one Hulk right Hogan. There. That looks that little. No, that's real. Dude. Yeah, I've seen that picture. Oh, of That kid. Oh my god! Why does he look like look that? Look at that. Hey, that's he looks like Jack. Yeah, that's just great genetics, forever. right there, dude. And and I think they've done. I think I've seen videos of him actually working out and doing stuff dude, too. Like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that kid before. Yeah, dude, genetic, bro. Pro bodybuilders. I bet you, if they tested pro bodybuilders for these myostatin, you know, <laughs> markers or whatever, they'd find. So what I think is interesting kids. is, do you think that like. Like for example, you having your son today versus you having your 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 first boy. Yeah. Do you think because you've built all this muscle mass over these years that you you you've changed and altered hmm. some of his potential genetics? Do well, you, I had been working. Did we read that about like epigenetics yeah. that you you right. potentially can to? So I always wherever currently you are. Yeah, like you, I think more than yes, I do. I uh, but I had worked out since I was fourteen, so all my kids. Yeah, I know, but you the amount of muscle you have built. Your body today versus your body when, when you I was were twenty five, hmm. it's pretty similar. But oh, here's really? the, yeah, but here's the difference. My my ex wife was not into resistance. Yeah, training. I know Jessica is. Obviously. My wife was, and I think that the bigger impact is the mom. Sure. While she's pregnant. Sure. Yeah, I think that. So if she li so whatever the mom does when she's pregnant is sending a signal to the womb that says this is the environment you're going to be born into. So it's more likely that it's going to turn on certain genes in the baby to say, hey, you're going to be lifting heavy shit. That's what life is like when you're born. I 100% mm -hmm. believe that. And so does Katrina. And I, that's one of the things I thought was so cool is uh, to watch her take her pregnancy on like her, her competitive like D1 
type of attitude. She's like building it like yeah. Well, yeah. no, that was like she literally approached fuel. She, yeah, yeah, she yeah. she approached that. Dude, both of our kids, bro, don't have our our little caption. Yeah, I know. They, they <laughs> we lucked out. Guys are still crossing. Yeah, Dude, yeah, Aurelius yeah. has got like the longest calf bellies ever. He's got when he, now when they when they did the ultrasound yeah. to, to see they do they do what's that one where they check for you know defects or whatever and uh-huh. we don't want them to tell us the gender yeah so we kept it a surprise so we told the guy don't let us know the gender but he fucked up because when he was doing it he goes wow he goes uh, this baby's got some sturdy legs and i told i looked yeah, at jessica i'm like he wouldn't say that legs. about a little girl yeah. <laughs> because that's inappropriate to say i said i bet he's a boy and he was he turned out to be a boy. <laughs> i knew it and he does he's got these big old uh, some sturdy leg ladies out there that sounds like a very neutral statement i feel like you wouldn't like, if you said to a if you said to a parent about no boy, you're right I mean, like, yeah you would say something like yeah. oh, it looks like, oh your baby's stocky you know if it was a little girl be like excuse me <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't be saying that about my daughter yeah i'm stocky yeah, yeah. yeah. You say that about Dude, i want to go back to your your predictions for this year because now you got me thinking like okay so if we if you think that gyms are going to surge like there's a big movement back into fitness you got to think that there's going to be some front front runners or leaders like who do you think what businesses wow like like planet fitness for example fitness survived a lot of this which is surprising but uh yeah i don't know like which gym's going to dominate that's That's, an interesting question that's a really good question because so many gyms shut down yeah and the ones that are left there's a now there's less gyms to or service. remember when we had we had adam sedlak on here talking yeah. from ufc and what they were doubling down and, so i and- bet you if you have a gym that's open and it's great you have now less competition exactly. with the higher demand mm-hmm. there you could very well you're I, seeing this with restaurants too it's the yes, same kind of that's a good point. parallel is yeah. that yeah. happening with restaurants right now bro yeah, restaurants restaurants that survived or are, are, are they surging yeah. Have you gone? Well, I don't know if, what the numbers well, are. What about, yeah, exactly. It's but, just all like. Have anecdote, you gone out like, to dinner seen, recently? Mm, not really, actually. I don't think. The, I'm trying to remember the last time. Well, we, we There's the good restaurants I've been we to, to. Yeah, or like impossible for me to get reservations. Yeah, really. So, yeah. We, yeah, but we, that has nothing to do with the that they're spacing out or regulating different. No. Or, well, well, too. Like uh, since you know the pandemic, like they've been able to push their outside business and expand like their seating. So they actually, and I've talked to one of the restaurant owners who talked about. You know they're they're full outside and inside. They when before they were just full inside. That's true because I went to. I mean we we go out to dinner uh, maybe a, a, one day a week or two days a week, and we were in Santana Row, which mm-hmm. all the restaurants there. There is no special seating. They're letting everybody sit like they normally did, mm. and packed, packed. Everything was packed like I'd never seen before. Mm. So Interesting. I'm I haven't heard anything from anybody positive about the restaurant industry. Uh, they were crippled yeah. oh yeah the last no, i heard so most got decimated yeah but uh, like the ones that survived and, and were able to kind of like reinvent themselves or do takeout and all that well, like what about the okay well. what about what was the place that we went to do our our christmas party uh oh uh, nova yes yeah remember what he said that they were like forced yeah, to they, shut down they were crushed and they said when he opened he's like i'm booked out for weeks mm-hmm. yeah, yeah because maybe the demand is higher because hmm. people are like i want to go out so mm-hmm. okay so the ufc you mentioned uh planet fitness like yeah. what's left i mean 24 hour fitness no, is that God, still they're thing dead. they're, they're dead. dead they're old uh, news. yeah but they still have dinner, la though. fitness yeah i mean they'll, I, they'll, they'll, I mean they'll they'll do better than what they're doing right now but i don't even consider them a front runner anymore like i'm mm-hmm. i'm in more interested in planet fitness what ufc Crunch. is doing yeah, UFC Crunch is kind of same difference, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Same owner or whatever. So I'm I'm kind of interested to see what they do, especially UFC because UFC uh, was what they were only on like their year five or six. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's been longer than that. It's no, it's been longer than that. Yeah, like 10, 10 years. Ten mm-hmm. years when they have been out. God, it's been that long. Oh my god. Yeah. How do you think Orange Theory is doing these days? So I actually, I would love to talk to Brendan about that. Now they were they were really hurt because they Big have time. And they were fact, a group. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, I don't even know if they are, the one here in Willow Glen who drives by there the most. I would think you would Lincoln. Do you go I've by seen Lincoln? It, the, I they don't. just started doing classes. And I've this one over here, yeah, yeah I, I, the one in Santana Road. But they down. were they were limited. They were only doing like twelve person, yeah. twelve people a class. So I don't know. That's it. I'll ask Brendan how how it's doing. I mean, he's always bullish and positive about it because yeah. he's yeah. a big owner in it, right? So, but I, I, he'll give me an idea of like how it's how it's doing. I as last I've heard, restaurants and places like that are still getting hit. Mm-hmm. Now, I, obviously, they're coming back a little bit because people are working their way back. But well, I wouldn't, make, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't predict or say that it's they're crushing. Mm-hmm. So that's an interesting. Inter- but I do, I do feel like there's a <laughs> fitness wave that's coming because now it's January. I mean, I the love fear. I love people that are prediction. over it. They want to yeah. get moving. Let's start exercising. Yeah, we got to so. get healthy and protect our bodies in the natural way too. What's mm-hmm. that say, Doug? 
Yes, another industry setback. Restaurants struggle with financial impact from the spread of Omicron. Yeah, see, that's what I, I think they're hurting, guys. So, yeah, I think they're still having challenges, but I agree with you, Sal. I've been mm. out to restaurants, and they are packed right Packed. Now. Yeah, that's what I've seen. Yeah, so I, guess I don't know. Over average, sure. that's probably the case, but I bet you there's a few. You know. I mean, that's also our experience too. Yeah. Like we we had that situation, but it was like we're out on New Year's Day. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it's gonna be that's packed all the time. On, sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I've noticed that like the mall because I've been going out malls. At, like I said, restaurants. You're saying the same thing. Oh, so you're but a I super spreader guy, huh? Super spreader guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> super spreader <laughs> South. Dude, I made it. I made a joke that. Dude, I made a joke that did that just like it did not if if. It swam like a rock. Yeah, you, go, you were the wrong, <laughs> wrong audience or what? Oh, bro. So I went in. I went in with my cousin. I, was I like, bet there's a lot of this happening right now. You know that, right? Especially over the holidays, family together. It's like you, you drop a joke like that. You yeah, know, yeah. Didn't yeah. feel the crowd first. Like, oh, too soon? Too yeah. soon? Oh, no. Oh, I went sorry. into We went into the store and I'm like, oh, I forgot my mask. My cousin's like, ah, just whatever. You know, because here in California, they still mandate it, whatever. So I went in. We were going to get something real fast. So whatever. And I walked in and one of the workers was like, hey, you need to have a mask. And I said, I can't. I have a medical condition that makes it hard to breathe with a mask on. He goes, what is it? And I said, COVID. And he looked oh. at me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's funny. Dude, he looked at me like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I'm just kidding, dude. And yeah. I went outside. Like, oh. <laughs> so, I thought it was going to be funny, dude. <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, yeah. That's almost as Too bad soon, as that, that, that exercise joke I did on the priest that one time. Uh. I told him, I was like, we both exercise people. And he's like, what? Well, yeah, why we're on the topic? So well. Why we're on the topic of businesses and predicting and what we're surging? Like, uh, I was actually doing an update on um, the streaming wars. Right, we've been talking about mm. that uh, for over a year now. And uh, man, I, I told you guys that I've been impressed with Disney. I mean, at one point, I think people on the show were like, "Are you guys sponsored by Disney?" You talk about Disney all the time, but um, and the guys cool. on All In predict that one of the guys predicted that it's that's the like like pick of the year this year that Disney's going to surge. And that their stock has been kind of whatever, like right? stock yeah. is whatever. But they that they got hit big time with the, <coughs> excuse me, the theme parks oh, being yeah. shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Disney Plus really helped carry that. Like if it wasn't for Disney Plus, I'm sure they would have been crippled. And so the fact that the stock kind of held held was because of this growth. And Disney Plus saw a sixty percent increase just this last year wow. in subscribers. Yeah, they're up to here. I'll give you the numbers. I was looking at it uh, earlier, and I, I was wonder like, if all the Star Wars nerds came back because they're they got Boba. So that is why. Boba. So so that's or that's the theory. Because the they left for a bit. I mean, there was a lot of people that unsubscribed. You know, after some of the shenanigans after the Mandalorian, where mm. um, I forget her name, Kira or uh, oh, where she got fired. She got fired in, for just ridiculous reasons, and so there was this backlash. But I think they recovered <coughs> from that. And people Gina Carano, back. Gina Carano, thank there you. you. Yeah. So I, you know. I mean, I've been saying that, like, I don't think that Netflix will be the the, the winner of all this, right? Because I just think that their content's not as good as some of these other streaming services. HBO Max, mm -hmm. Disney, I think that they're... They they're, have their own flavor. Disney and, they have their own flavor. Heard, they have all the backlog stuff. Food, they're, the 99, right. they're the 99 cent menu. That's why, so, and, that's why they'll be around. Though. Right, yeah. I think they're, they're kind of like that. But so, listen, Disney Plus... Okay, is now up to 118.1 million subscribers. What's wow. the average cost per month? At $30. No, no, no. It's not. No. $13. Sorry. Yeah, Holy it up. cow. Something like that, I think. That's all yeah, monthly? Be between 9 and 13. Yeah, do the yeah. math on 100 that. 100 million people paying over 10 bucks a month? 118 million. Now, Netflix has got 214. Zero, Netflix is the leader still. <laughs> Netflix is the leader, but only at 214, so they're not that far ahead. Do you remember when they were pushing hard for uh, internet? What was the regulation they were trying to push? Oh. Uh, um, net neutrality? Net neutrality, yeah. yes. Okay, and do you remember what they said? If we don't pass this, the internet's going to be bleh, and We're going to get less variety. Or whatever. The internet $8. is way better now, and we got way better streaming services now without that stupid net neutrality you know let's let the government control the internet well, yeah do you so do there you, you go do either everybody. one of you guys follow all the talk around like web 3 and what that's supposed to look no. like and you guys don't well pay isn't this all centered around the metaverse and the nfts all that stuff is like being incorporated in web uh 3.0 or whatever yeah, yeah kind of uh, although i you know i thought well, it was interesting to hear one of the guys takes on the on the all in podcast saying the shitting all over the the metaverse you know oh yeah 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 because basically and i i, I you know i 
think that's true what he says is that it's he goes what everyone's all hyped about he's like is not revolutionary if you've been playing video games if you exactly. play minecraft and you're just trying to buy real estate in video games that, and that's what he really made it's fun of hilarious. it's like that's we've already been doing yeah. this for a what? decade already and there's nothing really yeah show new. me some tangible business uh you, you know reason for it yeah uh, i haven't seen it yet Here's i mean we're gonna see so this is the year we want to talk about predictions this is a year i think we're gonna see some serious bubbles get burst okay here's yeah. your first sign yeah. you ready i'm on i'm on with you okay here's a here right here this headline alone will tell you that uh nfts uh, uh not that they're going away there's just gonna be a washout okay ready here's the headline this 12 year old coder is set to earn over four hundred thousand dollars after two months selling oh. nfts oh my god yeah. there's your <laughs> sign everybody right there like yeah. you got a kid who's sell who's gonna make almost half a million dollars in two months because of this hype and bubble around NFTs where a lot of people don't understand what's going on. I think just- I think and you know there's gonna be a lot of people that are not gonna like this statement, but I think I think eighty percent of the NFT shit that you see out there is gonna burst. Yeah, twenty percent will be. Around. I, I can't disagree with that. Yeah. I, I'd say it's, it's going to be a big number. Only yeah. the cream will be left. I think and it's not going to leave, but it's definitely I agree. the big dogs are going to stay. And that's what I think. I think people get offended when you say something like that, or they get butt hurt because they're over there gambling and buying a bunch of NFTs. But I'm not saying it's going to go away. The technology is, you know is amazing, and I think it is the future of how we do things. But it, I don't think that everything is going to NFT. You know, no, I got an ex- I got an example that's kind of like that. Do you got okay? So we're all old enough to remember when the internet. Uh, kind of first became a big thing. Do you guys remember when people would buy and then sell domain names? Yeah, yeah. It's it's very it's similar. very it's very, very similar, similar to .com. And when yes. .com went crazy, dude, a, I bought a stupid eighty <laughs> percent of the, the. I still own like ten yeah. domain yeah. names. They're yeah. so dumb too. Star Wars merch. Eighty percent of the .com <laughs> companies took a shit, but yep. there still was twenty percent. There was Correct. still there was still yeah. a, a percentage of those that hung around and were and it's, you know what it is. It's same. It's basic business fundamentals. If you've got a good business model. And it makes a ton of sense, and it's going to add value to people's lives. It will stick; it'll make it through. Yep. And I think that's why I think the and when we were talking, right? So off air, we were talking about NFTs, and you know, would Mind Pump get involved in it? What would it look like? And the thing that we all agreed on is like it would need to be attached to something extremely valuable. Yeah. yeah. So that that was the only way that and it, it needed to be valuable scarce and tangible too. Tangible. We would. Too. Yeah. It needed to be. It needed to be something that someone's like, oh wow, I right now the value of that would I would pay double. I still or get. I get access to this. Right. Or that. And, and and that access isn't uh, predicated on the metaverse. Yeah, it's right. like you have access There's to real world, real uh, world kind of stuff. A lot yeah. of these people are selling stuff predicated on the metaverse yeah. in hopes that it goes in this direction. And you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get just, early and I'm going to have this piece of real estate here. You have here. no idea what that looks like. You just yeah. wait till they do NFT season tickets. You just wait. That's going to be insane. When you oh. own a season ticket. Well, now, and that's a great example of one that I think already has a, a market. Correct. Yep. StubHub is a, a massive business that came out of nowhere like 20 years ago or whatever it was. When And I remember when no one knew what it was and then it became this legal way for you to re-scalp tickets, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a massive market. And, and Ticketmaster, same thing. Like, but this is going to disrupt that and, and take a piece of yeah, that. Yeah, because the original right. people who issue the tickets now can get a percentage every time it gets resold. Yeah. So now they're going to love. Okay, StubHub, sell them all you want or whatever. I'm going to get my ten percent every time it's sold. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's going to be massive. Do you remember when um, we had the discussion about streaming services like four or five years ago, mm-hmm. and we were like theorizing what it's going to look like? And, you know, is it going to be more channels or less channels? Yeah. This is a good example of what happens when you allow, you know, companies to compete. What we have now is so much variety and so many different streaming services that the challenge now is not... Do you want to hear all the main ones? I actually wrote them all yeah. down. Right? So, okay, you have Disney, Netflix, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Paramount, and YouTube TV are the ones that I, I tracked. There you go. So, And you all to- of them have, like, an infinite amount of content. Which mm-hmm. is insane. Yeah, so you have you have Disney at 118 million. You have Netflix. These are subscribers. You have Netflix at 214. HBO Max. That's my that's my dark horse. I think that one's going to come up and actually surprise. I do too because they're releasing uh, good movie shit. theater movies. Yes, yes, yeah. and they're they're into that. So and they the, have Harry Potter. You know Harry Potter. Yeah, Spider Man and the. Yeah, and Ma- they, oh yeah, I did see that Harry Potter. Yeah, another one, and it's going to be released on HBO Max and theaters. That's so cool. and then Spider Man, but they didn't do that at the same time. They did theaters mm-hmm. first. They did but, Matrix on. Uh, they did. Yeah. By the way, Spider Man twelfth Bro- highest right. grossing film yes. ever, which is crazy considering that a lot of movie. movie theaters have got like either shut down Dude, or. Can I tell you guys something? I hadn't gone to the movies in years. I'm a huge movie theater. I love movies and movie yeah. theaters. 
And I went in and I sat down and we watched Spider Man. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah, we went to theaters to watch it too. But I tell you what, dude, as I sat there, I thought to myself, I wish this was on HBO Max. I think I would have enjoyed this at home. It, just the same. Mm. It, it is lost. I didn't it's think a lore. That at all. It has <laughs> no really. Yeah, it lost its allure. Well, you're, I, I mean, you're talking about theater. two completely different people here. Like Sal is such a homebody and doesn't need to like go out and do stuff. You and and your wife can't even sit two days yeah, in like the exactly. trucky house without we, having we, to get we out. We always there. are trying to find excuses to get out of the house. So right. I guess you know, yeah. They're, they're I'm like you, Sal. I'm like, give me my my couch and my surround sound and let me you know put my feet up and yeah. control the pause if I gotta go take a pee. Because like, I was sitting <laughs> in there and I'm yeah. like, eh, I mean, it's cool, but is this really? I wonder how much I spent. Three tickets, like forty something bucks. But you had popcorns. Like it's kids. dying. It's dying. I think it's, it definitely took some black eyes, but there'll still be people around that it, want like the theater experience. I'm trying to think what it'll be like in you know a decade or two. Like it's, it's more it's, of a novelty at this point. It, than for it sure, is will like be. a a popular destination like it used they're, to be. They're gonna have to make it. Uh, entertaining in different ways. Like there's that one well, the, theater the, that you get food. The bottom drinks. line is the only reason yeah, why it's still alive at all is because there still are movies that get released first and only on in theater. Correct. If that was on streaming, it would completely die. Yep. It wouldn't have enough people like yourself. You still need places to take people on dates. That's right. There'd be one per fucking state then. No. <laughs> you know take them to your house. Like a movie theater in the middle of California. Yeah, that's it. That's a better date, if, Justin. Yeah, I know. But like, if you're a parent, you know, you don't want that. You know? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Like, Go, get out of here. <laughs> it's, hey, yeah. Yeah, I guess for teenagers, it's a it's definitely something that would probably be... Uh, I think because as a, a teenage kid, I would I would like to go to the movie theater over sitting in my house and watching totally. for that reason. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think it would be gone. Like there will be a theater around, but I think it's going to go the way of drive-ins. I think they're going to exist. That's a good. Not there's be, a good. There you go. Yep. Like it'll be like that. There's drive-ins. You know, they still where, exist. But I kind of disagree with you guys. I think that um, you know, there's definitely again kind That's of right. right to be wrong to gyms. Like <laughs> it's fine. Like I, I think that there's a lot. And if you look at the box office numbers, that'd be interesting to see with uh, Spider. It broke records. I heard that people went to the theaters a lot. More. No, it did. It broke. Yes. It wasn't records. released anywhere else though, Justin. I know, but like the more movie uh, studios That's are going to test that. That's a fair point he's it's, it, it, that was, it was very surprising. I was listening to the radio talking about it this morning, and they were just talking about how uh, the fact that it broke records at a yeah. time like this when you would think most people aren't going. Yeah, it kind of blew everybody's mind. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that um, because we've been so confined, um, I, I feel like there's so much more appeal to go do things. Maybe. So yeah, well, I'm point. so sick of being at home. So yeah. going, I want to finish my numbers here because I, I, I have another prediction still and it, it circle, it closes the loop on what we talked about a long time ago with uh, my prediction of them being like a, a, a streaming service that kind of gobbles up multiple. And, yeah. I, and I'll tell you what I think. So Amazon Prime has got 200 million, uh, Hulu 43 million, Paramount 47 million, YouTube TV only 4 million. <laughs> So I think Amazon is primed to gobble up at least two or three of these sure. suckers. That makes yeah. sense. Because of how powerful that company They're is. They're always the sleeper and like all Right. These- and I just think they probably put the least amount of effort into like the content that they're creating. Because oh, they compared get, to the other big ones, they suck. Yeah. yeah. And they just, they couple it with Amazon Prime, right? So you get access to all yeah. the, the videos if you have that. So they've got a lot of value in that. So their base is already the size of Netflix as it is mm-hmm. and continuing to grow. And they've got the money and capital and power to potentially, you know, pick up one or two of these things. So I yeah. still don't think that theory is dead that you might see this. I will say this though. Have you guys noticed more and more of these streaming services Pulling big box office actors to make their own oh yeah content yeah, yeah. well that's so what- I, I just heard too that like Leonardo DiCaprio and um, Scorsese like came up with some TV series they're getting Keanu Reeves to be in and it's like th- all these big names and it's like a TV series I don't know which platform they're releasing on but it is going on streaming yeah. so it's like but it, it's advantageous for a lot of these big Hollywood actors now to do well, streaming. Well, the money, the money is there. The case. Yeah, it's just right. like what we're seeing the exactly. disruption in boxing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's people that are, I mean, you have these celebrity no names that have no boxing skills able to put together a pay-per-view or make more than a professional yeah. fighter. And so it's completely disrupting that space. And you'll see the same thing, I think, in the acting space. You have companies like Netflix. What was Netflix last year? There, How many billions of dollars they, they were investing in, yeah. in well, content? I, I heard they have, like, they're building out studios and everything around us here, too. 
too. So like most of Hollywood is like ghost town and now everything's moving either up here or like, I don't want a bunch of actors living up here. I know like there's another location, I think I I forget where, but yeah, they've moved all their studios. Well, I mean, was that movie on red notice on Netflix? It was, uh, Ryan Reynolds, the rock and, uh, what's her name? Oh, that broke records for, it broke records. It was a good movie too. It was actually a fun streaming, but it was a fun movie to watch. So we'll, we'll, it'd be interesting to see where, where these, where these, uh, streaming services are putting up their, um, studios. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I mean, why even put it in California at all? It would make, no, yeah, they, they've moved out. Yeah, a lot of them have. So expensive. Yeah. And well, I would love to, to know what or... cities that would be. Albuquerque, yeah. New Mexico. Is that one? Yeah, yeah, there's one. Yeah, look them all There's up. Wyoming, I mean, that's no. smart real estate no. move right hey, there. So did you guys end up watching the new Matrix? Yeah. I didn't yet. Oh, like, you I, yeah. I really liked it. I ended up going through the ba- the you know the previous three so with the I feel kids. like I'm a minority in this. I felt a like- A lot th- of people didn't like it, but I thought it was good. Yeah. I did. I'm a huge Matrix fan. I'm See, not and ridiculous. I'm not. I'm not like a massive Matrix lover. In fact, I don't, even, you. I don't even remember two yeah, and three. I love like, they well, were, two and three they were unmemorable for me, and I think I watched them both one time, never cared to watch them. The first one I've seen several times. I just mainly for the concept, but yeah, the first one was obviously the best. And I felt like, the, to me, this was the closest to the first one as far as uh, how much I liked it. Yeah. Cool. You can't ever beat the first one because it was so new, right? Yeah. It was so unique. And- well, that's really hard to do, too, on the fourth one, you know, to to get it to yeah. be anything to I, resemble the first one. That's Okay, so that's that's, that's why pretty, I liked it, because I'm like, how are they going to be hard to do? How are they going to be able to bring this together? Yeah, and I thought that the that the concept was smart, the way that they that's what put I it thought. together. Yeah, mm. I thought it, I thought I thought so too. Yeah, so cool. I'm gonna good. check it out. And then you guys like Spider Man? That was great. Yep, uh, I haven't. Tobey Maguire, the best Spider Man. By the way, I'm gonna make that say that right now. My kids and I got in this really? huge debate. Oh yeah. Oh, who's the best? You don't like, like the new kid? I like the new. He's kid. new. He's great. But Tobey Maguire is the best one. I think that's that's a, how many of them have there fact, been? I think that's a fact. Is it like Batman? There's <laughs> been like eight of them or it's something. A, how, how many? How many been? There's been a uh, quite a few. Let's see. With Toby, I think there were th- two or three. Then there was that one kid. Uh, what's his name, dude? The dark haired kid. I don't know. Where he fought the lizard. Yeah. Guy. I don't remember his name. Uh, I can't Garfield. Remember. Yeah, something some, Garfield. Yeah, some Gar. And then the new, the new kid, uh, and I can't remember his name either. That like, my daughter <laughs> keep, keeps telling me she doesn't think he's cute, but I know it. You Who's the one that's on our screensaver? That's the one. Yeah. Uh, 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 Tom, what's his name? Uh, the the new. What's the the latest guy? I can't remember his name. Mm. Is it Tom? Is it Tom Holland? Oh, Tom Holland. Tom, yeah. Maybe. Is that him? That sounds right. Yeah. That's that's uh, the kid. That's the new kid. Uh, yeah. That's on, that's on our iPad. I'm like, oh, you got a. Uh, <laughs> Is that funny? Do like kids still have posters and everything in no. their rooms? Yeah, no, it's just screensavers and right? stuff on that. That's how it is. That's that's actually probably a good uh, example of what what that is today, right? So what a poster was for us as a kid is now screensavers for your yeah. phone or your computer. Is what did you guys Kathy have? Ireland turned into a screenshaver now? You had so, Kathy yeah. Ireland in your room? Yeah, dude. Did you really? Yeah. In that green uh, uh, outfit, oh, I think yeah. I had the same one actually. Yeah, really? I think so. Yeah. Wow. I definitely times. when I moved out to my room, like uh, when I had a room that was like you know, kind of detached from the the house, right by the by the. So they, they couldn't hear you making noise at night. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I had like all those posters <laughs> hanging up. All the, <laughs> The car, cars and girls. A cars lot of girls, girls. washing cars. I had, yeah. I had Arnold. Keep it simple. I had Arnold Lou Ferrino. Oh, <laughs> and then I also had. That's why I wonder hey, about you. Yeah, yeah, I I had, <laughs> you hey. all doing, we were all doing stuff in those rooms by ourselves. Hey, <laughs> Formative years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? I no. get it. You didn't let me finish. Oh, my God. I also I, had, I don't want you to finish, yeah, We don't bro. want you to finish. We don't want to watch <laughs> you finish. We don't want to be there. Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's that. I remember that one. Uh, I studied that picture very, yeah, right? very closely. There was a store in the mall when I was a kid. I don't know if it, that store. Carmen Electra. That's the one that I, that one. I had oh, Carmen. Yeah, Holy she Toledo. Hot. For yeah. sure she's hot. What was that store? There was a, st- a store where, you remember where you used to get, in the, or at least the, the, where I grew oh, up. Oh yeah, where you buy posters. Yeah, and, there, and you could just flip was through. Was it goodies? Good, what am I saying it wrong? Or is that the place that like, sold CDs? Not Spencer's, yeah. It's like something like that, though. Something like Spencer's. Yeah. It was, But it was a different a different place. I don't think it exists anymore. But that so. was like, I mean, whenever we had any extra money, it was like three ninety nine a poster or something like that, you go down I'm going to bring it back with my kids. Yeah, just, what are you going to do? Yeah, just put my kids. Throw some of your bikini old Bikini girls. Cappy. It is kind of weird. Why isn't that <laughs> popular? Is it not? Okay, I have. No, you guys are the ones that have the kids that are old enough. Like, your kids have no posters on their walls? None. That's uh, kind of weird. Not- I mean, they, they kind of decorate with like, plants and stuff but it's not really like, yeah no it's like yeah it's not like it's that. not a thing I, yeah that's weird i, I know it's that. weird yeah why yeah why wouldn't they I don't, know. I don't know that's a good question i have no idea that's interesting yeah it is yeah i don't know uh i did want to bring up some more business news adam for mm. you i know you like this, this Let's hear uh, business it. you do too justin sorry i don't I mean do, to I know you just not, in, me not like include that. you it's uh fine. so the company that we work with public goods forbes Ooh. did an article on them 
which is kind of interesting. Did you guys know that their revenue has grown, ready for this, 200% this year? From 2020 to 2021. Wow. Now, here's the other cool thing. High demand. Because, you know, they're like super, so public goods, for people that know, they sell like home goods, they sell dog food, they sell all your soaps, your shampoos, super eco. Candles, uh, everything. Yeah. Eco-friendly, no disturbing chemicals to your body, Mm -hmm. great packaging, low, you know. Low uh, waste. Low carbon footprint. So you cut out the middleman, so you save money. Very inexpensive. Like, I think this is a very disrupting uh, business model. But they've also, in that period of time, so they grew 200%, in that same period of time, they've planted over 300 trees. Nice. So they've also done that. So And I feel like this new model is a very, um, it's a very interesting one to watch. It's like we are climate conscious. We're also mm-hmm. conscious of the chemicals that you put on your body, but we're also a business that saves you money and is profitable. It's not like, you know, at just because we're planting trees, now we have a shitty business model, which is what you see a lot of these companies. Right. It's, it's interesting. The company, like uh, we were talking to, what's our young buck that was in here the other day that we hadn't seen him for? Enzo uh, was in here talking to us about- <laughs> Just call him a young buck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I'm thinking about that generation. Like, like that's a, you know, that's like a, a thing Just that nubs, was yeah. I'm not familiar with as a kid. Like I, if I was a uh, young man, like getting ready to get a job somewhere, like when I was interviewing or looking into a company to work for, it wasn't like I was asking 24-hour fitness, like, well, what are you doing to give back? That's actually like Gen Z and millennial kids. I know, right? That's a very common thing. I was talking to my niece and she's she's the one that worked at uh, Google, Facebook, and is now at Stripe. And like one of her deciding factors, forget the fact that I think it's a brilliant move like because she gets stock. Altruistic. Yeah, they wanted to hear from the CEO, like what are you doing to impact the world like in a positive way? Like a lot of these kids, that's that's a deciding factor for them to actually get it. Now, I didn't want to burst her bubble and think that like, you know what? How much of this though, is just what these companies are presenting to everybody because they know that's what you're supposed to yeah, do. Yep. And they're getting ranked by that score now too. So it's like because they're getting because they're they're getting ranked that way, how many CEOs just know that that's like a move that okay, we got to make sure that we we build we bake I'm sure this there's a into lot the of formula. that, but at least the thought of going in that direction I think is positive, you know. Oh overall. right, I think it's yeah. I think it's a net positive from yeah. it because they're doing something. I do to, too. What's yeah. up, Doug? You got something? Well, yeah, so you said 300 trees. 300,000. Okay, yeah, that seemed Sorry. Like I was going to say 300 something trees when he said is I was like very, that's not a big deal. 300,000. Uh, yeah. Wow, I'm glad you caught that. No, yeah, 300,000. I planted 300 trees. No, actually their goal for this month is 100,000 trees. Yeah, so sorry, 300,000 yeah. trees. Where they, are they planting they them? Do we huh? know? <laughs> no, no <idea. laughs> okay. In the ocean? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, that kind of matters. No, I get split like you, Adam, because uh, number one, I like the fact that market pressures are pushing companies to be more conscious about, you know, things that I think that are people consider important. So I like that. Yeah. But then here's the other side of me. The other side of me is, If a company is creating a product or service that you like so much that you're willing to trade your dollars for, they've already done the service. That's how I feel. Yep. So, so, so it's okay to choose. I I have no problem with you choosing the company that you want to buy your products from based off of what you believe in. I think that's very smart. You're voting with your dollars. You have way more impact with your dollars than you do with your votes uh, during elections. That's a fact. Or your voice on Instagram. Or you're right. So I, I think that's amazing. However, I don't like this, like companies owe us, they owe us to do all these things because the reality is they've done already the good thing, which is they've given you something that you are willing to buy. Yeah. Otherwise you don't buy it, right? So I get split, you know, I get split yeah. on it's that. It's just like an added bonus if they're also conscious of- Well, that know. or even shaming somebody who's not currently doing that, right? Like if you're not doing something like that, like shaming that company for like, because first you have to build the damn thing and be successful before we can go out and do all this philanthropy work, right? It's like, right. Let, us, let us first build this and prove the model that that we have we have room yeah. in this marketplace. Actually, and then make some money. Money, so then we, we could go going. out and go do yeah. some great yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's you know? like getting mad. Keep at, us afloat. And like it's like getting upset with a, a a billion a company that produces billions of dollars in revenue and saying, oh, they're you know whatever. When they did, they they were so good at what they did that enough people gave them their money willingly to make them a billion dollars. Right. They did. That means they did something that a lot of people wanted. Right. So that's pretty good. I think we should be like, thanks. I appreciate that. And if you don't like it, don't buy from them. It's just so. interesting. I mean, that, that it's definitely different, right? When you listen to like l- listening to Enzo or my niece like talk about like businesses and stuff, yeah. like. But uh, if it's if it's like that, I love it. Okay, you believe in that, then go in that direction. I think yeah. that's great, you know. Yeah. But you know, it's funny if you ever get to a point where money's tight, you then you start to change that a little bit because, like, yeah. I, you know, how many people I knew who became parents were like, 
I'm using reusable diapers because I don't want to have disposable. <laughs> and I look at them like, yeah. we'll see how strongly you believe about that, right? You know, after yeah. the first month. It's pretty fun washing those all the time. Yeah, and nobody, <laughs> nobody yeah. does it because yeah. it's a, it's a, you know, it's a pain. It's, yeah. it's challenging. Hey, do you suffer from digestive issues because you're trying to eat more protein, build more muscle, improve your health? Well, you may be actually lacking digestive enzymes, or to put differently, increasing your intake of digestive enzymes could help with all that. In fact, digestive enzymes can actually help you assimilate more nutrients, so the food that you eat becomes more effective. Now, not all digestive enzymes are equal. There's one company that we believe in that makes digestive enzyme products specifically for fitness-minded people, and that's Masszymes. And of course, we have a discount code, so... Head over, check them out. Head over to masszymes.com. That's M A S S Z Y M E S.com forward slash mind pump. And then the code mind pump 10, mind pump 10 will give you 10% off your first purchase or your order. So go check them out. Here comes the rest of the show. First question is from B Cape 25. Is it possible to build the calves or is it genetic? Oh, good Skip old calves. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw this to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They've actually done studies on this. The hardest so, workers. First off, uh, genetics uh, have a huge influence on all muscles of your body in terms of how effectively or how well they build or respond to exercise. And it's not more or less for calves, right? That's the, that's the question. Is it, is, are calves special in the sense that they're more resistant to building or growing? And no, they've actually done studies on calves and found that that's not the case. Here's what's probably the case. What's probably the case is it's most likely that the calves are the most skipped body part that people have in their training. And that's just a fact. Like, most dudes that work out consistently, if they were to, if somebody tracked how many times they skipped a body part, I would, I bet you calves are number one, legs are probably number two, and core is probably number three, I would guess. And so when you do all those years of training, you know, if you trained your calves like you did your chest or your shoulders, you probably would see similar I think, growth. I think I could make a case mm. that they are uh, unique and, and in the sense that I think of all the muscles that are challenging for someone to build, they're the ones that's most commonly that people do not take through full range of motion. That's and, another and, good. That's a good point. And somebody like Ben a lot of Picol choppy reps, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And Ben Pakolsky likes to talk about how you know most muscles that are underdeveloped on somebody it, they have a a poor connection to that muscle at the end range of motion. So the 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 full and full flexion right of like your calves, which is standing all the way up on your tippy toes, and ask yourself. Unless you're playing basketball, jumping rope, yeah. or doing how sports, how often do you do that? How often do you get all the way up, uh, up on your toes like that? And I Only just think heels that, on the weekends. And I think that if you, <laughs> for most of your life, you don't do that, and then you go in the gym and you go to train that, that you just don't have that full range of motion. And just like what we say about squats, like you get so much more bang for your buck taking the body through its full range of motion. So I would make the case that uh, most people have a limited range of motion on their calves. People and don't, they don't get the stretch and yep. they don't get the squeeze. That's right. And part of that reason is because I th I think if you start training your calves, the potential to be able to, be able to use a lot of weight is really high. Like, oh, I could put so much weight on the standing calf machine. Yeah. But then they start to cut the rep short. And mm -hmm. when I see people working out calves in the gyms, I almost never see full stretch Full squeeze. It usually looks like this kind of yeah. short kind of pumping motion. Now, of course, genetics play a role, but again, they play a role in all your muscles. I don't think there's a special, actually, again, studies actually confirm this. There is no special, you know, reason or case for calves being somehow more stubborn than other body, par body parts, you know, speaking, you know, generally. Now, what kind of genetics influence your calf growth? Well, there's, you know, muscle fiber type and density. There's also muscle belly length. This is a big one. What you'll notice is a lot of athletes uh, have shorter calves and partially because shorter calves probably helps with locomotion and agility. Longer calves you'll see in sports that, that involve more sturdy bases. So you'll find these in strongman athletes and, and, and weightlifters and stuff like that. Um, long calf bellies, you have bigger area to grow. So you know if you have short calves, you can build them all you want. You end up getting, ending up with this 
short kind of naughty naughty looking calf muscle yeah. well i also think like a lot of the explosive movement you know plays a factor in that with uh some of these athletic endeavors where you are on uh the the forefoot a bit and yeah. you're moving very explosively just like in sprinting you see the difference between you know those uh you know that muscle physique versus you know more of an endurance athlete uh but yeah i I think about that because it is definitely a genetic factor, but also to what you're doing in volume. Uh, like, so if I'm, when I was uh, training all the time in athletics, I was always trying to make sure that I was on the balls of my feet and was, you know, able to move laterally and, you know, forward and back, you know, with, with, you know, explosive uh, type of um, force. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, if you look at people's routines, you'll see like, 15 sets for back for the week and, you know, 12 sets for biceps for the week. And you look at calves and it's like three yeah, or six, or it's the one that they skip. Well, and they then, don't treat it like they're actually trying to I'm, build look, just the calf. I'm totally guilty of this, 100%. And there was a period of time where I actually p placed a very – like I, this was a realization that I had, or at least I was being honest with myself, and I said, you know what? I'm going to be super consistent. I'm going to ramp up the volume. I'm going to focus on the stretch, focus on the squeeze. I'm going to do lower reps and higher reps and different angles. And it was like a good year and a half of really consistent calf training. And I gained like an inch and a half on my calves. And I, I thought, oh, my calves don't respond. I mean, the truth is I just don't focus yeah. on them as well. You know, the, the best hack I ever had for that, there was, and I think it was a, about a year and a half, almost two years. It was during when I was competing. Um, I decided, because that was an area of insecurity for me is my calves. So I decided I was going to work out in shorts year round, even <laughs> yeah. in the wintertime. So I had to face that insecurity, and my one, and it also would motivate me to do calves first in my workout. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if I can get in the door and get to that calf machine right away, I get them pumped up so they don't look so bad. But the and it made a huge difference in my calf size because, and it really had nothing to do with the the hack that I found that. It was that I was training my calves first. Yep. At every, almost every workout, they were getting attention, and just I'd never paid that much attention to them before. And so I saw the greatest gains in that in that time period, and realized like, okay, I don't have just terrible calves; it's just I haven't put the the effort into training them. And then doing things like really taking them through full range of motion and slowing the repetition down. Also, I never back then, but or before then, I always trained like high reps, mm -hmm. uh, similar to like what people do with abs. I was not training; I wasn't strength training my calves. Yeah. I wasn't doing putting five, the substantial load. On yeah, it. I actually started doing five by five loaded, like you know, seated and standing calf raises, and the combination of full range of motion doing the the heavy load and then prioritizing them in the front of my workout I, I, in a year's time i made some pretty good gains on my calves better than i was making in any other muscle group so i think that's probably a, a lot of it for most people is they just don't yeah. give it the same you attention know, you know a machine uh, two things gave me gave me the biggest gains one was a donkey calf machine love that because of the stretch you get at the bottom it's gnarly, and the squeeze is pretty gnarly there as well. And then the other one was blood flow restriction. Wow, did that make a difference with my calves? And I think it's just because blood flow restricted training works better on the limbs anyway. And man, if you you use that knee wrap below the knee, right above the calf, and then do, do no weight and just rep out, the pump and the burn you get in your calves is just so intense. And I, I saw a difference doing that. Yeah. Next question is from Chris. Weister, should creatine be taking pre or post workout? Oh, good old creatine, the best ergogenic supplement you could probably take. Besides, uh, you know, making sure you get the nutrients that you need and protein. There's a little research around this as far as yeah. it uh, being right, but it's like splitting hair. Yeah, it's a right? small difference, but post workout, yeah. post workout, you they do show that your body is primed to uptake and utilize more of this creatine to turn into ATP. Uh, that being said, good point. It really doesn't make a huge difference. We're splitting hairs in terms of, you know, if it's in the morning or before mm -hmm. workout or after workout. You know what makes it more of a difference is what you take with your creatine. So we've we've known this for a while that if you take creatine with a lot of insulin stimulating sugar, we'll see, we'll see increases in creatine. So back in the day when creatine really became a big thing, mm -hmm. it was really the first supplement that actually did something. So when, when it came out in the 90s, it took over and I would say single-handedly uh, transformed the supplement industry into what it is now. That. It, it was creatine came out and it worked and it was crazy and everybody's like, oh my God. And when they saw that sugar increase the uptake, you, you had these products with 
like Celtec with like 72 grams of, <laughs> of, uh, of dextrose. And it, and it does increase creatine uptake, but who wants to drink 70 grams of sugar? It would make me nauseous. And it's probably not great if you don't want to gain lots of body fat and all that stuff, but it does help. But here's some better ones, right? You could do alpha lipoic acid uh, will increase creatine's uptake with a little bit of carbohydrates. So if you have a post-workout meal with carbohydrates, like let's say you have some white rice or something like that, you could do uh, alpha lipoic acid. And then here's another one for people who are afraid of extra calories or don't want extra calories with the creatine, sodium. Sodium will increase the uptake of oh, really? the creatine. I have yet to mix it with my LMNT. That's how I do it. Oh, wow. That's exactly how I do it. And I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so mm. it increases the uptake of, hmm. of creatine. But here's how creatine works, right? You, you take it and you build up your stores of ATP over time. You can make that happen a little faster by doing, doing what's called loading, where you take like 20 grams of creatine for five days, then go on five grams. It does speed that process up. I think it's a waste of creatine, but if you want to make it happen a couple days faster, that's fine. But once you top out those ATP stores, then what you're doing is you're just supplementing to make sure that they stay topped out. There's a point at which you can't necessarily get any right, more. Any more benefits anymore. So it doesn't make a huge, you know, difference. Uh, that being said, I still take it, you know, post workout, uh, and I'll take it with LMNT, which has got the sodium. Maybe I'll throw some alpha lipoic acid in there. Um, and then eat my post-workout Was meal. there any truth? Remember when they used to say that it, you don't want to take it with orange juice because the citric acid did something? Oh, well, you know, it, it can make it unstable if you mix it in something and leave it there for a while. Yeah, if you mix it in orange, they'd say don't. Like I remember I remember my, my cell tech, I remember reading that or saying like, you know, don't mix it with. I believe some of it converts to a form that isn't very usable, might not actually be good for you. But yeah. I just, just take it. Just take it in the mouth, wash it down. I normally just do it with water. I mean, I normally splash it, the, the non-flavored stuff that we have, and just shoot it real quick. But now that I know the, about the sodium, I mean, I, I'm drinking LMNT anyways. I may as well do that. I didn't realize that. It says it prevents it from being absorbed effectively with six six-rack. The other one's caffeine. They say that caffeine uh, can reduce its uh, its absorption. But again, if now that's, you- uh, that's interesting because you have companies like Bang who have paired their bang energy drink with creatine. I know. Oh, that's funny. But that honestly, is. it's like once you're once you've got those levels topped out, it really doesn't make a huge difference, you know? And it's one of those supplements that we now are finding, and I've said I'm going to say this again. I've said it so many times. It is a it, soon to be health and wellness supplement promoted and advertised to everybody because mm -hmm. we're seeing benefits for cognition, heart health, uh, it's got antioxidant properties. It's good for other tissues other than just muscle. I bet you're going to see kids start to take it. They're already putting it in those like meal replacements for the elderly. So, you know, like the little drinks that they'll give like insure and stuff for right. the elderly. They're already throwing creatine in that because it's helping with muscle loss and it's helping with balance and strength. So it's, it's one of those supplements that is going to be it's just going to grow in terms of its usage. Yeah, for me, I, I, I noticed too. Like, so I, it actually like upsets my stomach a bit when I when I take it without any kind of food to go with it. So that that was something I had to kind of work through. But I know a lot. There's some feedback with that that it it, it you know upsets certain people's it can. stomachs. Some yeah. people don't don't can't take creatine because it upsets their stomach. And some people are what are called, I guess, non-responders. I thought you were going to say pussies. And I was like, hey, no. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, for most people, you're going to see benefit. And you could take a smaller dose. You could do, you know, two grams or whatever a day. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I try to give it to my parents. I try to give it to grandparents and family members um, to help <sighs> with all that, you know, cognitive. Yeah, the cognitive effects and all that. It's, it's yeah, it, oh, it it's, works. It's a healthy supplement. The only people that probably shouldn't take it are people who have uh, actual, like, organ issues, like kidney issues and stuff like that, in which case you'd want to consult with your doctor. Next question is from David Akao Training. What tips do you have for introverted personal trainers? You know what's funny about this is there's mm. a myth that being introverted – means you're not going to be successful as a coach or a trainer. Hmm. I believe this when I first started as well, um, because I'm, I, I wouldn't consider myself an extrovert. Depends on the environment. I could be both. But if I'm in a gym, I'm an extrovert. That's my place. I'm comfortable to talk to anybody. It's not a big deal. So I thought that that was necessary for success as a personal trainer. And then through the years, I've had enough trainers who were extremely successful <laughs> with their clients, extremely successful with their revenue, with how much they produced, that were not uh, that I would consider to be introverted, 
And uh, they did very well. And then I, I said to myself, okay, there's, you don't have to be an extrovert to be a, a successful coach. Well, especially today with uh, you know, content creation, like the ability to, I mean, if you, to post or write. Like uh, if, you can, if you can write well mm -hmm. uh, or have a creative side to you uh, as far as content creation on you know, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram <clears throat> and blogging and writing white papers, like there's uh, a lot of potential for you to have some success in that, especially if you can put some words together pretty well. Yeah, I mean, Justin, Justin yeah. you're, you're of the three of us, you're the most, I would say, introverted in that sense. Adam and I are more similar, yeah. you, but you were also very, very successful. Did you have any specific strategies? Yeah, in I mean, I, I, I kind of weave back and forth, but yeah, when I'm, when I'm in business mode, like I'm very much introverted like I want to make sure everything I have to present is is perfect and I'm very analytical of what uh you know I want to uh, portray myself as and so I had a hard time just like throwing myself out there and um talking to random people I've never talked to before so it, it took a lot of work for me uh to get through that because at the end of the day this is a very interpersonal job is you have to like people you have yeah. to like talking to people so uh, if that's something that's like way outside yourself you know maybe it's not a good fit but like maybe something like you know if you're really into fitness like writing or um you know pr providing some kind of content where you can do that from your house makes sense uh but if if you want to work through that there's ways to do that so and you guys have actually experienced some of that when we did our when we started our uh, um improv yeah uh, uh training uh stuff like that where it just kind of it, it forces you to not live so much in your head you have to come out with it you have to immerse yourself uh and sort of release the fact that maybe I'm not going to say the right thing every single time, or maybe, you know, I, I got to take it in small steps. So for me, it was more about taking it in small steps of first thing is to just hang out where the, the conversations are easier um, to, to come across. So if I'm in the front desk and somebody's coming in, I learn their name. I just say, hi, like I just take it in small strides. I just say, hi, they come back. I remember their name. I say, you know, we'll see you next time, Joe, whoever. Right. And then you start to kind of like build rapport. I always think that you put too much pressure as an introvert on trying to get all these things nailed down, like right away. It's just, it's just about, you know, putting yourself out there, getting to know people, like how long have you been here? Very simple conversations. You don't need to go for the clothes right away. Uh, you need to get, you need to get outside yourself first uh, and, and get to know people. And then, you know, it, it just starts to line up towards deeper conversations that lead you towards, um, you know, maybe even turn them into a client. I, I also don't think you should stress this too much either. Um, I think you should double and triple down on your strengths um, and, you know, maybe spend 20% of your time doing these classes that are going to work on your speech or 20% of the time putting yourself in these uncomfortable situations to try and get you better at that. But I think if you're if you're naturally an introverted person, uh, stressing about oh my god I'm introverted and I need to be extroverted if I'm going to be this this good trainer yeah, a waste of time. is yeah is not only a waste of time but it's going to become uh, you know stressful as fuck because it's not who you are yeah uh, accept who you are and double and triple down on your strengths and a good example talking about Justin and comparing to the two of us <clears throat> you know there was a time when you went off on your own doing your own thing I was running my own thing. Uh, Justin uh, had a website 10 times better than mine and you built all that. You mm -hmm. had the ability to sit down and write and create all that content and you're much better at that than I am. Maybe I'm better at walking up to random strangers on the street and hustling them into my right. classes. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you probably drove more leads to your business with your strength on your website than I was able to on my website. So if you're an introverted person, um, instead of focusing on that, you're, you're not good at that, focus on what you're good at uh, and be great at it, you know, get, mm -hmm. get good, find those areas that do make you a good trainer, you know, and, and double and triple down on that. And then spend a little bit of time trying to develop the skills that maybe that like we're talking about. Yeah. And yeah, I think 100%. also there's a misunderstanding that, um, that per training people is an extroverted, um, process or activity. It's not when you're training a client one-on-one, -on -one, it's you and your client. And many introverts flourish in that environment. They're mm -hmm. really good at developing, uh, deep connections, making their clients feel very comfortable um, and at home and secure with them, which is a very important thing to do as a trainer. 
The only part I could see, well, well here's where I think the challenge can come from is oh, what about getting clients? That's yeah, that, where the fear. That, that yeah. is the big challenge. That's the fear. But there's many ways to create opportunities to where the, like you said, Justin, working the front desk, like the conversation comes to you or setting up a booth a free body fat test, right? That sets up the so the conversation. Well, even comes the, even the, again, I go back to what I say. Like, I mean, yes, it's it is the 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 stressful part for this person is the lead generation. Well, lead generate other ways. Write a blog. Yeah, totally. You know, create a great website that draws Technology's people. Technology is beautiful. For yes, this. I love that you brought that up because I did. That's all I thought about was like, how can I hack this? You know, it, to to be more beneficial towards me. And um, you know, yeah, I, I looked at a lot of the. Uh, sort of presentation binders at the front of the gym and I'm like and I made sure because I could sit there on my computer and do all these things and like write like copy and like you know really build myself up uh, in terms of writing you know I got a lot of business that way too and so you just kind of look for other opportunities where people will come across it maybe pick up the phone and call you uh, and just you know figure out ways now online obviously social media and all these other yeah. things play a factor absolutely Next question is from Becca Clemenson. In 20 years, where do you see yourself and Mind Pump? 20. Oh my God. 20, 20 years? 20 is a long time. I mean, I'll be, we'll be 60. I, impossible to find, hopefully. Yeah. You know, yeah 62. I'll right. have, I'll, my hair will look like Adam's. That's what I predict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20 years is a, is a really long time to try and predict I, where. That is. Yeah, I, mean, I, I predict, let's see, 20 years from now, you're going to see, I think we're going to see. Catch me in the metaverse. Um, yeah. You know what? That's true. That is so true. We'll be fighting it. Right? That's so true from the inside. Yeah, I tried know? those Oculus goggles that you have, mm -hmm. and that really was weird because I, I literally wore them for five minutes. That's today's tech. So twenty years from now, who knows? Yeah. And I had them on, and I was playing that game a little bit, and I could see how you could get totally enthralled with it. And then when I took them off, that was only after five minutes. The real world felt very strange to me because I had already adjusted to that that world yeah mm -hmm. so i could see how the metaverse world is going to make people not want to be in the real world is fitness going to be all like that i mean i could see that i mean i i, I still yeah. stand by my prediction of that we're going to have a very clear split in our society i think there's going to be a, and it's going to be pretty even i think it's going to be now where do you think we'll be so we're well, mind pumped 20 years from now we're going to be on the unplugged well, let's side. so honest where do you think like we're always trying to reach people where we see there's potential issues so i think we'll live in both yeah so, so I, I we'll think try to we'll try to sort of evangelize within the uh metaverse of like how to be able to move or maybe we'll create products or things in there to, to help aid in the physical yeah i i find that we'll we'll be somewhere in the middle. I think that we'll we'll take advantage of the this new growing space. Or we'll create something, some content in there potentially. Um, but I don't see us being like everything's going in there. We're going to be yeah. like that. I just don't see that, and I don't see most fitness people, yeah, being like that. I think most fitness people are into actually moving in real life and going out there and uh, interacting with other people and, and, and doing physical things versus this like, you know, metaverse. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we're probably going to see more medical breakthroughs in the next 20 years that we saw, than we saw in the last 200 years. Um, we're on the cusp. I mean, like this new genetic, these genetic technologies is RNA, mm -hmm technologies, um, the way that we're using psychedelics and studies for uh, helping people with their Genetic mental bacteria. issues. Yeah, modifying bacteria yeah. to be able to do things for us. I think in the next 20 years, we may actually uh, find ways of solving obesity through Western medicine. Now, that's not going to solve all the problems, but the obesity issue may very well be solved with something that Western medicine comes up with. Oh, that, wow, that's really going on. Uh, well, it is, but I see what the science is, looks like. Well, 20 years from now, you got to see how far we've come just in a few years. It's it's accelerating, right? The whole, was yeah. it Dunbar's equation or I forget what it is, but like- oh, Moore's, uh, Moore's Law. Moore's, Moore's law. law, thank yeah. you. Yeah, What's Dunbar? It, Dun it's a different equation. <laughs> 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 Don't ask me to describe it because uh, I just remembered the name. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. I just, I just think that everything is accelerating to a point where, like, I every science fiction novel I've read, every movie and TV series, like, it, it's so 
crazy to me that we're so close on a lot of these different ideas that were thrown out already uh, to see 20 years from now. That's a long time uh, to see like what society is yeah. going to look like. Yeah, it's I mean, it, we're, we're now we're starting to get into like what we think the world is going to be like versus where do we see ourselves in mind pump? Like, well, how do we per, navigate it? I, well, I feel like the, Remember, I can, we're going to be 60. <clears throat> so like, I, yeah. by that, this by, is also a good point. by that time, um, I believe that uh, we will have built and set ourselves up financially that technically nobody has to work at all um, or will ever have to work again. And we will do be doing only the things that we absolutely love to do. And I, we love to podcast. I think we all have a passion for that. 20 years from now, I don't know if we still will, but I let's- I don't know if I could talk to you guys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I, I do think that we will have distilled what Sponsored we- Because we all depends. love work. Now, I don't think anybody in this room, okay, including Doug, I don't think- uh, ever sees himself fully retiring. So I don't see myself retired just because we have financial, complete financial freedom. What I see us doing is distilling down the things we do in business on this, the things we absolutely love to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what work would will look like. It'll be less about managing people and scaling, and it'll be more about, oh, I just love doing this. And we'll be doing those things. And mm -hmm. right now, those things look like podcasting because we mm -hmm. enjoy that part. Um, but I don't know if in 20 years if it'll exactly be that. I, you don't I, think uh, Max is going to be sitting in your seat? I was just going to say. going to be sitting in my, yeah, yeah my, my, my That would be my dream. I mean, you're right. It's 20 years Who from knows, now. So. Yeah. My dream would be like one of my kids, right, it takes over. and But I mean, that's unlikely that, you know, that would happen. It's it almost never works that way. But that would be pretty cool, you know, to have, you know, the younger generation and kind of teach them. I, I think it'd be cool, too, if we just, uh, I mean, just personally, if we had more cool events or like we had just like a place where, uh, you know, people that listen that have common values and ideas, like they could just, yeah. we could all hang out, have an experience, you know, somewhere cool, like a ranch or something. Oh, I totally believe we're moving in that direction much sooner than 20 years. I mean, I think we, this idea that we have with the kind of the MP homes, right? And mm -hmm. moving them into this like kind of destinations and experiences. And you're talking, so I think that's in the near future and wouldn't be that far fetched to think that one of the investments we do would be this yeah. massive property or cool place that everybody could come and meet once a year or whatever. Like it's I could so totally see hard that. to think twenty years in the future, though, because like I said, I, I, when I look at the the science around longevity, it's weird and fascinating. The science around uh, fat storage, fat loss, uh, how the body, <clears throat> yeah, how we can influence the metabolism and inflammation. It's going to be really weird, and it, we're going to be at a crossroads if we do, in fact, get to the point, which I think we probably will in 20 years, where we literally have exercise in a pill, for lack of a better term. People are going to take it or do whatever, and they're going to look the way they want to look, but they're not going to get all of the other profound benefits of going on the journey of fitness. And it's going to be a very strange situation where, mm -hmm. wow, I look good. I'm not obese. That's good. But, you know, I still kind of feel lost. I don't feel as great. Like, what's going on? Uh, maybe they won't notice because they never were in the first place. But a lot of the benefits you get from a lot, most of the benefits you get is the journey, of the learning mm -hmm. journey and how you develop the relationship with yourself and with your own ego and with exercise and nutrition. Once you take a pill that does all that for you, you've lost that. All you've gained are the physical results, which there's benefit to that. But I think it's going to be put people in a very interesting position, similar to how we well, see- Well, imagine how much this is going to change if we live to 120 or 130, you know, or our kids- Dude. I mean, that's going to just, uh, that's yeah. going to shake up well, so many it's, things. It re, it's similar to what we see with celebrities when they get all this money and fame and power, and then we hear about them committing suicide. We're like, how could this- They had everything. They thought that was the end result. They Yeah, because you're in this position and you're like, why am I not happy? Because yeah. it's not about that all the time. It's usually about other things. So- it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to get to a, a position, not just with fitness, but with everything, where we're going to have everything that we want, and then we're going to be like, why isn't this enough? Like, mm. why don't I not feel fulfilled? We'll be preparing people fitness-wise for outer space. Outer space. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, making sure they go to Mars. Look, if you like Mind Pump and you like our information, you'll love the free stuff that we've written for people to help them with their fitness goals. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find us on Instagram. Some of us easily, some of us not so easily because of shadow bands. <laughs> Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm still here, you guys. Now, I tr you can try finding me and Adam at Mind Pump Sal and Mind Pump Adam, but Instagram is shadow banned us for speaking the truth against the lizard people. I don't know why we got banned, but try to find us, follow us. We post good stuff.